nation's favourite antiques experts. Let's get fancy. Behind the wheel of a classic car. I'm always in turbo. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Hot stuff. The aim, to make the biggest profit at auction. <gasps> but it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners. Cha-ching. Oh, my goodness. And valiant losers. Mm, bonkers. Will it be the high road to glory? You are my ray of sunshine. Oh, stop it. Or the slow road to disaster. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> This is Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Look at that, eh? We're in the beautiful county of Cheshire. And who's grinning from ear to ear? It's a beautiful day. It sure is. Get your rocks up, get your rocks up, honey. Check them out now, get them up downtown. It's the second leg with these two road trip faves. Dino's Margie Cooper and Ochuku Ojuri. Nice being with you. Yeah, it was lovely being with you, Margie. <laughs> the whole trip. What a great trip this is. I know, it is. Yeah. Uh... Our giddy pair's carriage is this speedy green machine, the gorgeous Jaguar Mark II, built in 1963 before seatbelts were mandatory. You're very competitive, aren't you? You no. said no, you are. No, I'm not. A little not. bit. I believe you, Margie. Thousands wouldn't. <laughs> no. This trip is set to be action-packed. <laughs> I've never put my hand in my pocket so quickly. Cheshire's own Margie is a former silver dealer. I think it's a flipping egg cup. Oh, sold. But she can turn her hand to anything. Wobbly fingers. <laughs> Chuko doesn't hang up out in the shops. Oh, look at this. Oh. But he's got a good eye for style. Look at that. And a bargain. Ah. These two are a match made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I knew we'd get on. Marge, I'm loving being with you. Oh, so I'm so absolutely right. loving it. Chuko started with £200, and from his first sale, he made an easy loss and now has £198 and 18p. Margie began with the same amount, but has sailed ahead with £209 on the nose. I'd say it's pretty neck and neck between our two chums. Would you holiday with me? Of course I would holiday would with you. I would. Where'd you go? I don't know. I need shoes. Well, this is no holiday, but we are on a road trip. They started in Liverpool and their trip will cut a path through the Peak District and head mostly south before a final auction in Didcot. We've got five items to buy, haven't we? Yeah. I think you could maybe buy a couple of steady pieces that, you know, can't lose money. Uh, <laughs> 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 they can't lose money. And then yeah. maybe take a bit of a gamble on a couple of them. Be a bit extravagant. Yeah. The Jaguar will be purring its way to Stafford for an auction, but Congleton is where our cool cats are kicking off. The town was once a centre of textile production, particularly gloves and lace, rather fitting them. The mitts are off for our competitive antiqueurs in a former Victorian mill, now filled with collectibles. Oh, I love all this stuff. I have bought these before and done OK. And these came into being in the mid 19th century, because early in the 19th century, when you sent a letter, the receiver paid for it. The person who received it had to pay for it. Well, if you sent a letter to somebody who couldn't afford it, the letter then came back to the sender. So it was an absolutely crazy idea. £34. If I can get those for sort of 25 quid. I've, I've got to haggle a bit on these because they've got to be in the 20s for me to have a chance. And I'm going to carry on looking. One to weigh up for later then. Oh, it's a great place, this, but a lot of stairs. You get your steps in on the road trip, Marge. Everywhere you look, you see things. And what's this? Ah, oh, this looks quite good. Let's have a look at this. Walkies? You know, I quite like him, and he's got a few things going for him, right? A, he's a dog, a spaniel of some kind, a dog cell. It's a doorstop. It's great quality, and it's an old one by quite a well-known maker called W. Bullock. Victorian. They also made spittoons. He's nicely cast. He's cast iron. He weighs a ton, and I just think he's got a chance, but I've got to find out how much he is. Because if he's under £30, I think I can buy this. 
Another one for the maybe pile for Margie. How's Chuko getting on? Look how sombre and contemporary that is. Just a simple black pot. And to me, that's exciting. And raw Lancastrian, they're really decorative. You know, this is circa 1930, so a lot of stuff around that period would be full of colours and flowers and, you know, what we may take today to be, you know, quite sweet, quite saccharine. And that's the bits that I love, that you can take from a time that's, you know, 100 years ago and bring it today and make it look like it arrived today. I think it's a really good thing. I don't want to pay a lot of money for it. It hasn't got a price on it. Nice find. Moving on. Wow, look at that. Music, making music to my ears. Or you'd think, but I think these are actually early dumbbells. And it's got on here, department store Gamages, opened 1881. That'll be Gamages of Holborn, London, trading for nearly a century. The department store was particularly known for its toys and hardware. I really like these. What an unusual thing, because you don't really imagine people 1900, like, working out or keeping fit. You consider that to be quite a modern day thing to do. I think they're really, really smart. They don't have a price on, so um, hopefully I can get them for a steal. While Chuko works out his options... <laughs> I wonder if... I bet there's nobody watching this programme who's ever had to suffer one of these. <laughs> it is probably an early 20th century dentist drill. <laughs> belt driven, so there would be a belt under there. I, it would go around there, come up here, and this would activate the drill. You can almost hear it, can't you? The things that turn up in antique centres. <laughs> And if you want to buy it, <laughs> it's £95. No, thank you. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> Not one for the faint-hearted, eh? I've been all around this shop, and this, to me, is something so special. And I love bird cages anyway. People nowadays will put flowers in them, dried flowers, ornaments. You can have them at home, you can have them in shops, you can have them in restaurants. But to find one like this in such good condition, and just look how unusual this is. You know, the wire work on this is phenomenal. A, a true artist. And best of all for me is this feeder, and these are always missing. As this French birdcage could be around 150 years old, that's a rare find. For this to survive that long, it's just wonderful. No price, though. Hopefully it's going cheap, cheap. Oh, dear. Over to the dealer, Julia. Hi, Julia. You've got some absolutely wonderful things here. So I found the kind of 19th century, early 20th century dumbbells. OK. I love those. They are very interesting. You've got that lovely black pot. Yeah, Royal Lancastrian, I think. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> and you've got a gorgeous, my favourite of all, is this uh, Victorian French birdcage. Yeah, that's really... With the really... original feeder on there. That's beautiful. I'd like to buy all of them. OK. Ooh. So this is what I'm thinking. The pot, I'd like to pay £5. <gasps> OK. <laughs> the dumbbell's 10 OK. And if we could get to 45 on the birdcage? Oh, the two items, the dumbbells can be 10 and the Royal Lancastrian vase can be um, five. But the birdcage has got to be 50. That's fair. Yes. Yeah. fair. Deal? Deal. Brilliant. Well, I've got my <laughs> money here. Very kind, Julia. That's 65 pounds for a total of three lots for auction. Take care. That haul leaves Ochuko with 133 pounds and some change. While he goes off on his travels, Margie's off to another till to see dealer Kate. Right, Kate. No, no, I think he's a very nice little dog. He's lovely. And I think he's quite old, isn't he? He is, Victorian. And so there's no price on it, so I'm hoping that he's buyable. Well, the best on him would be 25. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. 
Thank you very much. And uh, the postal scales. The postal scales. Yeah, yeah. they're 30, 30 something. Yeah, which is a bit high for me. Mm, we can do we can do 25 on that as well. Okay, so it's 50 for the two. 50 for the two. Thank you Thank very you. much indeed. Had a really nice time here. Enjoyed it. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank indeed. you so much. Those tidy buys leave Margie with £159 remaining. Meanwhile, Ochoco is taking a break from his shopping spree and stopping off in Etruria to hear about a man from the potteries who changed the face of Britain way back in the 18th century. Treasurer of the Potteries Heritage Society, Andy Perkin has the story. Hi, Andy. Who's this guy? That's uh, James Brindley, famous at the end of his life for being a canal engineer. Born in Derbyshire in 1716, James Brindley transformed the way canals were constructed. His engineering genius meant greater volumes of goods could be moved and new markets created, helping make Britain the world's leading commercial nation. People think that he was illiterate and poor, but in fact, he was from a yeomanry family yeah. near Buxton. He was educated by his mother and he went off to learn the trade of a millwright. Wow. And um, was apprenticed in uh, Macclesfield. Um, and soon it became apparent that he was much cleverer than the person he was working for, making cogs and wheels and diverting power. So using the wind, the water to dry mills. In 1759, Brindley's skills caught the attention of the Duke of Bridgewater, who commissioned him to design and build a 10-mile canal linking his mines in Worsley to Manchester, reducing the cost of coal to a fraction. Leaders in Stoke's renowned pottery industry soon got wind and commissioned a vast waterway of their own. They wanted a 93-mile canal with 76 locks. Seems like an time. enormous task. It was, so that's why you needed a clever bloke like yeah. James Brindley. To make the country's first long distance canal possible, Brindley designed narrow locks and halved the canal's width. This conserved on costs and water supply required to fill it. In turn, the barge had to be adapted to fit, hence the creation of the narrow boat we still use today. So, oh, look, I don't want to fall in. I'd be like this. Yes, right? OK. That's turning this way. Yeah. And then pull it the other way, that's taking you the other way. The narrow boats brought Cornish clay from the sea to Stoke and then safely shipped the fragile pottery to markets in London and to the coast. To achieve the 93-mile canal system Brindley was tasked with, he had to create five tunnels, the longest being through Hare Castle Hill. <laughs> The canal, of course, had to go through the hill, something that was never done at that time at all. There was no geology information yeah. at that time. You don't know whether you're going to hit solid rock yeah. or sand or clay, which is why it took uh, 11 years. It would be five years after Brindley died that the tunnel was finally completed. During his lifetime, he designed and built nearly 400 miles of waterways, but the impact of his genius didn't stop there. Technology developed by Brinley and later Thomas Telford was then used by engineers to create cuttings and embankments for railways, which paved the way for Britain to become an industrial powerhouse. What a legacy, eh? And speaking of incredible engineering, here comes Margie in the marvellous Mark II. I absolutely love this car, I really do. Detective Morse, he had a car like this, didn't he? So it's quite a famous car, a famous model. I can think of another one of those. Suits you, Margie. The only thing that's annoying me a bit is I don't particularly like that, the gold-plated Jaguar figure on the front. The rest of it is all beautiful chrome. It's the small thing that's irritating me a bit. But apart from that, I'm having a lovely time. Now, that's what I call attention to detail. Margie's popping over to the former mining town of Cobridge. She's here to dig through the Potteries Antique Centre, which specialises in Staffordshire's famous ceramics and a bevy of other collectibles besides. And she still has £159 to spend. This is what you used on wash day back in the Victorian times and into the 20th century, can you believe? You would have your corrugated barrel full of hot water and soap, get the clothes in, and then you would work it like that and like that. There you go, like that. And that's how you washed. Can you imagine it? 
Am I glad that I just go like that now? <laughs> Me too, Margie. Less time washing leaves more time for hunting for antiques. Ah, oh, like what we got here. Do share. Let's have a look here. So we've got a dressing table set. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six piece set, which would have been glorious in its day. In these sets, because nobody really wants other people's brushes, but you can get them actually professionally cleaned. That's for your colour. And that's, the, that's what you want, really. That's the only thing that's of any value, the mirror, because the mirrors are still useful. And unfortunately, when you get this design, when they've been cleaned over the years, you end up rubbing it, and so that, those end up like little holes. Can you see? And they can be fixed, but it's not perfect. Also, the lining starts to come adrift, and when it's been used all these years, it's all breaking up. What's drawn me to this is that it's, it's a complete set. It's a ladies' dressing table set. It's 100 years old. So I think we'll get Joe in and have a word. Now, that's what we like to hear. Time to see Joe the dealer. Joe, <laughs> uh, I've seen a six-piece, I don't think it's matching, a uh, ladies' dressing table set. Perfect. Uh, How much is it? Uh, 65. So, uh, I was, can I make an offer of 40? Uh, I can go to 55. 45? 45. Yeah, OK, I can do that. Thank you very much, Joe. No Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you. That handsome lot has left Margie with £114 in the kitty. A busy day's shopping done. Time to rejoin Ochuko and get back on the road. What a day! <laughs> it has been a day. It has. It's a lot of nattering, isn't it? It's yeah. a lot of everything. A lot of chit chat. There's a lot of thinking. Yes. Chattering. Yeah. yeah. Driving. <laughs> yeah. You enjoying this trip, Margie? Yeah. <laughs> Don't be too enthusiastic now, will you? Goodness me. Nighty night. Our pair are up and ready to seize the day. How are you feeling, Margie? Quite good. Are you? Slept really well. So, yeah, I'm feeling bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I, I had a terrible night. I had such a strange dream. <gasps> Tell me. It was like I was in my dream was Elvis Presley. Oh, you... Taking that I'm, not. I'm not. <laughs> Elvis least, or yeah, Elvis? Elvis Presley, you know. Uh -huh, Elvis, uh -huh. not... Uncanny. I thought the king was back. You know why I slept well? Because oh, I'm I... nine pounds ahead of you. <laughs> oh, that's not nice to bring that up, really, is it? No. It's... Would you be upset if you lost? No. Yes, you would. No. Yes, you would. <laughs> You're a very nice man. I couldn't lose, couldn't lose to a nicer person. I couldn't beat a nicer person. <laughs> it's dog eat dog here on the road trip. Yesterday, Margie splashed out on three lots of metalware, some Victorian postal scales, a cast iron doorstop, and a six piece dressing table set. That's what you want, really leaving her with £114 for today. While Chuko spent more conservatively on three very different items. A pair of 1900 dumbbells, a royal Lancastrian vase and an ornate French birdcage. It's just wonderful. And he still has £133 and some pennies to play with. Right, so what's your plan today? I've got no idea. I hate, you know, that's such a difficult question, isn't it? It is, yeah. How can you have a plan when no, you don't know where I you're don't going? I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. <laughs> I've not got a plan for the next hour. I don't know what <laughs> Just keep driving. That sounds like a plan, Chuko. And after you've dropped off Margie, point the motor to Walgerton near Nantwich. Home to Dagfield's Crafts and Antiques, an enormous site with dozens of dealers selling their wares. Oh, this is something that I absolutely love. In fact, I have something very similar to this at home. It's a pineapple ice bucket. And it's an original one, something that you don't really see that often. And uh, these became incredibly popular. Honourable mention to the plastic one in Only Fools and Horses. It's got a few knots on it, which makes it a little bit tricky. And it's got £35 on it, which I think is probably all of its money. It's not badly priced, but there's not a lot of room in there for me. I have to say goodbye to it. Very sensible. Moving on. Oh, straight to this. There's no hesitation. Now, what have we got here, then? What a great clay pot. 
such a tactile item as well. This one says French 19th century walnut oil jar. Um, and there's a little tap here. You can see there's a hole where you would just literally tap out your oil, your fuel, as you needed it. And the oil would be used for lighting, cooking, everything. So these were essential items. But nowadays, what a strong decorative interior piece with real age, 19th century, to find something like that. The person that made this with the wet clay, you can feel their thumbs and their little indentations that they would lift this up to get it fired. And I just love all that. It sort of takes you right there, right to the moment. Oh, in love with it. It's got 50 pounds on it, which isn't a bad price, but I'm very cheeky. So if I can get this 25, a bit under, I'll be so happy. Godspeed to you, my friend. Over to dealer John. Oh, just found this. Oh, that's absolutely that's lovely. Doing that. well there, yeah. That's a really nice. That's spot. nice, isn't it? Yeah. It's what people uh, are really appreciating nowadays. Yeah. Put it in the houses, put it in the kitchens. It's got that authenticity to it. So. Yeah. I think. Yeah, you should do well. I'm going to try and buy it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Could uh, you be at twenty pounds with it? Oh no. Actually... No, no. I'll be on, on <laughs> jam away, tonight. No, no, uh, no, on jam. Uh, where would you be? I got to start low, so we've got somewhere to 30. 30. Can we be at, split the difference? Be at 24. Okay. Thank you so no, much. No there you go. Look. Oh, look, and money. I want as some well. change. Oh, tough. Look. <laughs> Enjoy that. Take we'll care. Soon, Thanks, John. Bye bye. Thank you, John. That lovely bit of earthenware could be worth its weight in gold and leaves a truco with £109.18. Well done. Meanwhile, Margie is taking a well-earned breather and stopping off in Stoke-on-Trent to learn about the city's most notable literary son and the work he penned to help the Allies win the Great War. Professor Ray Johnson, MBE, chairman of the Arnold Bennett Society, has spent decades studying the great author's life and work. Well, this is the Special Collections Room at Staffordshire University, and this is our Arnold Bennett collection. He's the writer of the Potteries. We claim him as our famous writer, and he was very famous in his day. Arnold Bennett's prolific writing career made him one of the most recognisable people in Britain by the 1920s, making his name with novels and plays, drawing on the people and places of his native Stoke. His early inspiration was his hometowns. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he continually wrote about them. Uh, and when he went to America in 1911 on the Lusitania, he'd, he'd got these self-help books, how to live on 24 hours a day. And these were very well received in America, yeah. how to organise your life and organise time. Time is not only money, it's worth more than money. Uh, in fact, um, Henry Ford bought 500 copies and gave it to all his workers. <laughs> it was such, he was revered as this sort of guru about how to live your life. So it's hugely uh, successful. Yes. He had three plays running in the West End at the same time, Good just gracious. before the First War. Then the war came, and because he was doing these uh, advice books and could reach people, he was uh, invited by the government to join a, a collection of writers that needed to generate wartime material. Lord Beaverbrook, head of the Ministry of Information, asked Bennett to lead the department creating British propaganda. Bennett took over the French division at a crucial stage in the war, when Paris was under serious threat from the Germans, with thousands destitute and fleeing in fear of an attack. He did go over to the front in 1915. He went to the trenches, uh, went to the French trenches and the English trenches, and he was responsible for Proper, uh, French propaganda, propaganda in France. French sentiment towards the English was desperately low, seeing the Americans' contribution to the war effort as far greater. To improve morale between the French and British, Bennett began writing complimentary press articles and pamphlets about the Allied trenches and used his society connections to convince Rudyard Kipling and other writers famous in France to take up the cause. During the Hundred Days Offensive, the British forces spearheaded the Allied attack that won the war. Bennett's full contribution is unknown, though he was offered a knighthood, but turned it down because it wasn't for his creative work. 
after the war mm. and he was in London. He was the top theatre critic. He had right. a columns in the London Standard and the papers. He was a society man. He was a very famous person. He was famous for being famous after really? the war and through the 20s. So he, he would be very good and at home in today's celebrity culture. One of Bennett's most notable novels, The Card, was adapted into a film starring Alec Guinness, in which a poor junior clerk meets a countess and wins a bet that he won't ask her to dance. That's you, Margie. A beautiful young woman walks into the printer's shop. Good morning. Good morning, madam. Bravo! <laughs> Could have guessed you'd make a fabulous countess, Margie. She was the finest woman that ever walked into this town. Yeah, she gets that a lot on the road trip, Ray. Despite Bennett's incredible fame, at the end of his life, his work fell out of favour and he has been largely forgotten, something Ray and others are working to correct today by campaigning for his work to be taught in schools and having a statue of Bennett erected in his hometown of Hanley. So I'm finally going to meet Arnold. Yes, this is Arnold. So he's hugely important to this area, isn't he? He said, you know, the potteries, I will always be faithful to my native town. Uh, and he always promoted it uh, and, and got it known all over the world. He's left a huge legacy. Yeah, a huge Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, a short drive away, Chuko's in the motor, making miles, heading to his next shop. Margie's very good. Margie keeps saying to me, oh, I'm not into the competition and you're a nice guy. And, but I think she is into the competition. And you know what? So am I. I want to win. Fighting talk, sir. Chuko's heading southwards to Stafford. The town became a centre of pottery production in the early 17th century due to the availability of clay, salt, lead and coal. Perhaps Chuko will find some in his next shop, Windmill Antiques, where he's got £109 and some change to spend. Hello, hello, hello. What do you have here? Even and all. Look at that. Don't see many of them, do you? Not a lot of protection on that hat. Stylish, though. Can I get away with that? It's a bit dusty, actually, and I'll stick with mine, I think. I think it rather suited you, my dear chap. Four miles away, Margie is bound for Dunstan. The village dairy farm is home to southern antiques, which should be music to her ears, as it's chock full of antiques and rarities, and she's still got £114 in the kitty. Oh, look at him. I wonder if you still work. Hey, you still work? Let's try. Oh, there's a button here. Dread to think where, Margie. That's quite enough clowning around, thank you. There are antiques to buy. Ah. Four holes, to, so it's been a plaque. And I really like plaques. This is a brass plaque. I think it's something to do with military. Indeed, these are technical listings for Marston Excelsior Limited, who produce fuel tanks for Wellington bombers. It's great quality, and I think somebody might find that really interesting. And that is only £35. Well in budget, and the item could fly. <laughs> Over in Stafford, Chuko's aiming high too. It's got some great signs up on this wall. I mean, I love this Station Master sign, and I love this Evans pastels, antiseptic throat pastels, for all affections of the throat. I love it. Probably dates from the turn of the last century. No ticket price. And this is a bit battered and bruised, but what a lovely sign. And I just love the wording on it. They're always collectible. They always do well. Ian? Yes, Chuko. You've got some lovely signs here. First of all, are they for sale? Not really. Not really. <laughs> oh, no. That's a bad start, isn't it? Mm. I like this Evans Pastels one. Might let that one go. It's a bit worn, isn't it? Was faded. It? Yeah, faded. Faded elegance. Yeah, did you get it like that? 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's really nice. What could that be? 40 quid. 40. Could we be at 34? Suppose so. Brilliant. You're a good man. Thank you, Ian. £34 for the early pictorial sign leaves Chucko with £75 and some pennies unspent. A few miles down the road, Margie's still on the hunt. Well, these look interesting. Well, these are... Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Now then, what has that been? That is... Um, do you think that's been in a train coach where you put your hat on the top and you put your coat and you, cook, you hook your coats on the hooks. It's a good weight. Well, that's it, and you know what? That's very reusable. It's very reusable. Somebody would put that in the house, wouldn't they? 60, 70 years old, maybe older. Nice quality, no price. A trip to the farm sweet shop to see Jamie the dealer could be in order. I've never done an antique deal in a sweet shop before. That'd be a first. <laughs> it's a first. Now, I've seen a brass, like, obviously it was in a train, it was a coach. And I've also seen this Marston plaque. I like plaques. So if you could, there was no price on that. OK. So I'm hoping that I can buy it. Right. So how much would that be? The Couchman rack. Yeah. Uh, I think we've, we'd probably do 50. So could that be a little bit cheaper than that? Uh, it be 30, 35. We'll do 30. OK, do 30, that's lovely. Okay. And the, the 35 pounds on the plaque, the Marston plaque. OK. Uh, we could probably do about 25 on that if you're happy right. with okay. that. OK, so I'll be very happy if I can have them both. Brilliant, thank, thank you. you. Call it 55 pounds for the two, which leaves Margie with just 59 pounds outstanding. Thank you so much, Jamie. I've really enjoyed my visit. What would you do if you could go back to the... if you could tra time travel into the past? Uh, how far back? I mean, as far... any any time. The trouble is, I'd, I'd like to go back historically, but I'd worry about going to the dentist and stuff like that. I know, but you'd still be able to pop forward. All right, well, I'd go back to Charles II's reign. Why? Because he's my favourite... my favourite And monarch. what would you pick up stuff? I've read so much about Charles II, yeah. I want to meet him. And That's... he did lots of good things. So I'm going back to the late 17th century to meet Charles II. And there's me thinking Where about Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> <laughs> so how far are you going back? What's we'll he, 1967? <laughs> Not quite antique, but definitely vintage. Sleep tight. Well, now, this is exciting. Our road trippers are gearing up for a watch of their second auction. Oh, we've arrived here. Gatehouse Theatre. Is this yeah. it? This is it, yeah. This is nice, isn't it? Romeo and Juliet. Oh. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, I'm very ready. Oh. They're at the Gatehouse Theatre. The performance space has just entered its fourth decade. A good time to visit. They do say life begins at 40. <laughs> Our perky pair, after a dash around Cheshire, the Potteries, and into the rural West Midlands, are now in Stafford Town Centre, while their sacks, full of shopping treasure, have been boxed off to Nottingham. To Arthur Johnson and Sons, auctioneers, where bidders will be in the room, on the phone and on the net. And the other side image as well. Start me at 30 on this one, please. The woman with the gavel is Hetty Jago. Margie bought five lots for £150. What are your top picks, Hetty? I think the Victorian postal scales are a good lot. Um, I like the fact they've got the brass weights with them. The silver dressing table set is very pretty. There is a little bit of damage to it, particularly on the mirror, um, but I'm hoping this isn't going to affect the price too much because I think it's a really nice lot. Couldn't agree more. Five lots for Truco too, on which he spent £123. Hetty, what do you think? The wirework birdcage has that classic Victorian look about it. I like the fact that it's still got the glass bottle with it as well. I think people are going to love it and I think it will sell really well. Back to the theatre to watch the sale via tablets. The wonders of modern technology, eh? Here we go. Here we go. Right. Margie's up first with the Victorian postal scales. 20's bid three, two, there you go. 25 is bid. 30's bid now at 30. It's with max at 30 pounds. Do I see 35? 35, thank you. What? At 35, Margie. do I see 40? Any further interest? 40, thank you. Oh, my uh, goodness. Right, stop now. I don't think they were. I will sell then. It goes online and sold then at 40 pounds. Mm, that's a little surprise. Really good. That's You've got all to be right. happy with that, I'm haven't you? I'm very happy with that. 
first past the post to a very nice profit. What have we got now? Truco's turn with the early 20th century wooden dumbbells. I love these. I believe in you, wooden dumbbells. <laughs> £20 with oh. me. He's on commission at £20. 25 30s with me. At £30 the bid at 30 I'm happy with on that. On the book at £30 then. And five in New Zealand. I've got 40 New Zealand. <laughs> at £40. Do I see 45 anywhere? 45 thank you. Back in New Zealand, I've still got 50 with me. 50. At £50, do I see 55 anywhere? Any advance on 50 are we all done then? I will sell. It goes at 50 I'd have never bought those in a million years. Well done. That's a great profit. Truckers in the lead. I didn't expect them to do that well. Margie now with the six-piece dressing table set. Start me at 80 on this one, please. No way. I've got commission interest in this and I can start the bidding straight in at £20 only oh. with it 20. <laughs> with me on commission 80. at 20. 35 is bid straight in online. I've got 40 with me, though. 45 and 50 with me. It's going. I'm on commission at 50. I've got five online. Do I see 60 anywhere? At 55 pounds, 60 pounds. Good you. money. At 60 pounds and five. Good money. 70 next. At 65 pounds, do I see 70 anywhere? That's a good price. 65 there. then. Any further interest at 65 then and selling at 65. I'm very happy with that. Great buy. That's I mean, this all is they're thing. worth. Oh, Margie, that's great. That tidy profit has Margie catching up. We're in a bit of a battle, aren't we now? We're doing all right, aren't we? Yeah. Most certainly. Up next, Chuko's Royal Lancastrian Black Vase. Well, I've got commission interest in this. I've got to go straight in at £20 to start. £25 is bid online. Any advance on £25. More. Pounds. Hey. The vase there at £25. It's online at £25. I will sell to the internet. It goes then 30 thank you. Oh. At £30. <laughs> that's a relief. £35. Do I see 40 I will sell then. Goes at 35. Yeah, I, I called it at that. I think that's yeah. all right. Yeah. The buyers went potty for that one. Well done. Thank you. Now it's Margie's doggy doorstop. I have 15 only bid. On commission at 15 pounds. Do I see 18 anywhere? With me on commission at 20. Do I see 25 anywhere? 25, Look, thank there you. you. Go. At 25 pounds. Any advance on 25? Oh, that's just... Should be more than this at 25. Any advance? 30, thank you. There you go. She's 30, great. She is, isn't she? Anywhere? Really pushes She really it. pushes it. We sure? I will sell then. It goes then at £30. Well, that was a rip-roaring success. a loss. <laughs> Every dog has his day and this one earned a modest gain. I like the way she pushes it. She's good. Very good. Chuko's turn now with the enamel sign. I'd be super happy with £50. Start me at 30 then. 30's bid straight in, thank you. And five. At 35, looking for 40 now. 40 and okay. five is bid. At 45 and 50 and five. At 55 and 60 bid. And five is bid. At 60 bid, five. 70's bid. Oh, I'm surprised. Do I see 75 anywhere? Are we all done at 70? 75, thank Ooh. you. In the United States, <laughs> 75. I'm selling then. 80 back in the UK, thank you. At 80. Do I see 85 anywhere? Selling it away, 85, thank you. Wow, Back in. I'm United shocked, States at 85, Marty. looking for 90. I will sell then to the US at 85. 90, that was close, it's in the UK at 90. Do I see 95 anywhere? Selling it away at 90. <laughs> I'm well really done. pleased with that. Incredible, Choco stormed into the lead now. But you've not lost on anything yet. No. Margie's Marston Excelsior Plaque is next. Anybody at £20 for this one? Oh, Not me at 10 no. then. £10 is bid, thank you. In the room at 10, do I see 12 anywhere? At £10 only, but at 10, it's with the room at 10. Any advance anywhere else? 12, thank you. 15 is bid. 18? At £15. You're out over there, it's with you at 15. Any advance on 15 then? 18's online, thank you anyway. At £18, Have online faith. now at 18, looking for 20. Seems cheap at 18, but it's online at 18 then. Are we all done? I will sell at 18 pounds. Not too bad. Oh, well, never mind. No. That's the first loss today, isn't it? Which is not to be sniffed at, is it, really? One lucky bidder has bagged a bargain there. It's a good auction, isn't it? Yeah, brilliant. One of the auctioneer's favourites now, Chuko's Birdcage. 
I have commission interest in this. I've got to start the bidding straight in at £30 with me. On commission at 30 Do I see 35 anywhere? 35 Come is bid. On. 40s with me. Here we go. 50s bid now on the internet. 55 My bid's left well behind. At oh, I love bid. this. At £90. Do I see 95 anywhere? 95 is bid, thank you. 100 is bid. 110 oh. We all done then. It's online at 110 and I will sell then. Goes sold at 110 You're happy with that? Very. Excellent stuff. Chuko's more than doubled his money on that one. Well I'm done. I'm really happy because I loved it. Oh, that's great. I loved it. It's still all to play for. Full steam ahead with Margie's final lot, the train luggage rack. My guess is 65. Oh, well, I do hope so. Chuko, I really hope so. I'll be very, very disappointed if this goes down. Start me at 150 on this one, please. <gasps> I have commission interest. I've got four commission uh, bids on this one. I've got Margie. to go straight in at £100. Oh. At 100 do I see 110 anywhere? At £100, the bid at 100 With me on commission, 110 is online. 120 is still with me. On commission at 120 130 is online. 140 Oh, my, my bid goodness. Now, now. 160 is bid, 170 bid now. 180, thank you. 190 is bid. At 190 200 oh. thank you. 210 and selling it away then at two hundred and ten pounds. Oh, my word! Do you know what you deserve that? Do I this deserve is a that? Great, great thing. Well done, Margie. That runaway lot has put you back in the lead. He had two or three of them. Should have bought another one instead of that silly plat. All's not lost, Chico. You've got one more roll of the dice, the 19th century piece of French earthenware. What the fiddle is that? Um, start me at sixty pounds on this one, please. Come on. Start me at 40 then, surely. Oh. Well, I have £15 only bid on commission at 15. 40 straight in, thank you. 45? 45 oh, is bid. 50. Oh, 55? 55 is bid, thank you. At 55 with you. 60? I'm gonna go one this is in the room. Thank you. Yeah. 65? Thank you anyway. 60's with you at 60. I've got 65 in New Zealand. 70? Do you want to go one more? 70, thank you. 75 back in New Zealand. 80? No, you're definitely out. Take Thank one you more. Anyway. I will sell online then. It goes at £75. That's not bad, How is it? How exciting it's gone to New Zealand. Yeah. Another fantastic return for Truku there. You made good profits on a few things. I made that big profit on the one thing. Margie started with £209 and after auction costs were deducted, has made a profit of £147. So takes a total of £356.66 into the next leg. While Chuko started with £198.18p, after fees he made a very nice profit of £172 and goes forward with a total of £370.38, making him today's winner. That was a great auction, it was wasn't it? Terrific, yeah. Glad I'm winning. Only one problem. What? You're 20 <laughs> yes. I'm so happy. <laughs> this one goes to Chuko, but the trip's only just started. Next time, our pals shoot for the stars. What's your birth sign? Taurus. I Are am you Taurus? Taurus? No way! And get carried away. Oh, I'm almost scared. Bring me good luck, so I beat Chuko. And there's drama at the auction. 140. 150. All right, stop now. <laughs> <laughs>